<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who drive overnight, long distance, or on rural roads, etc., what's the scariest supernatural thing you've seen? I was driving across the country when night fell. I was in one of the cars and was debating whether I should keep driving. I wasn't tired, but I saw a few deer on the side of the highway and decided it would be safest to sleep for the night at a hotel. The next morning, there were so many dead deer on the road that it was literally red for a few miles. Dead deer everywhere. Don't drive at night through wooded highways if you can avoid it. My sister visited our parents in around 82, she lived in Toronto. I wasn't born yet. Our parents live in a rural area, and one of the areas you have to drive through was, at the time, a heavily wooded area. Still, just less so, so my sister left around 9 p.m., drove through the area, and got beyond it, then her car broke down, thankfully in front of a family friend's house. She calls dad, and he comes to get her. As they're driving back to the house, it's about 10 p.m. or so, and they're just chatting and listening to the radio when they hear an incredibly loud scream, louder than the engine, then the radio, then them talking. Dad slams on the brakes, and they're like, WTF was that? When all of a sudden a coyote or something walks in front of the car on two legs, and this thing is like six or seven feet tall. It also had an unusual tail that was a black and white stripe. It walked in front of the car and into the trees on the other side, then they heard the scream again, and dad got the fuck out of there. He never saw anything like it again. On a rural highway on the way back to my college town in the middle of the night, maybe 3 a.m. or so, I was with my friend. This is rural western Oklahoma, fairly flat. A deer or something on the side of the road or even crossing it at night isn't anything unusual. Dark as hell. No street lights or anything, just the occasional reflector. But this wasn't a deer. It looked like a mountain lion, but it walked like a deer, and it didn't have a head. Normally animals' eyes are reflective in headlights, but there were no eyes. It walked across the road about 50 feet in front of my car, passed through my headlights, and turned and walked back in the same direction. I thought I was hallucinating from sleep deprivation, but then my friend said what the duck was that and where was its head. There aren't enough mountain lions or bobcats in the area for me to seriously consider that it could be what it was, but I don't know what else it could be. But it didn't have a head. I live in a rural area of the south. I was once out back roading by myself, just cruising with the windows down and enjoying the nice weather. I was driving through a bunch of little dirt roads that ran between some corn fields. I saw an older looking woman walking on the side of the road, holding a claw hammer. She had scratches all around her legs, and I was concerned, so I slowed down and stopped next to her to ask if she needed help. Once I slowed down and rolled the window down about halfway, I noticed that she was very obviously tweaking. Head twitch and everything. As I stopped next to her, she turned towards me, and I asked her if she was okay. She stared at me for a moment before saying, I'm looking for my baby. Would you help me find her? I asked her what her baby would be doing all the way out here. At this point, she asked me if I had any money, to which I replied that I had none that I could spare. I noticed she had a white knuckle grip on the big claw hammer that was in her hand. She offered to pay me if I would get out of the truck and help her find her baby. By now, my right hand was curled around the grip of the 9mm that was tucked between the driver and middle seat. I told her no, ma'am, I don't have time for that, and then she started to step towards my truck. I took off as fast as I could and ended up spraying her with gravel. I beat it back to town, called the cops, and told them what happened. I'm not sure what happened after that, but it was definitely strange. A few years ago, I had a sort of mental breakdown where I was stuck in a dead-end job moving boxes. My girlfriend left me out of the blue, and I had literally nothing except my cat, a cheap TV, and my shitty 2006 Civic. I kind of cracked, and since my lease was month to month, when it was up, I took my cat, got in my car, and drove west to California. On I-70 somewhere in Utah, about 8 hours into my driving, I was all alone in both directions, and it was about a half hour before dusk, so there was still a good amount of light out. Me and my cat were just listening to music and vibing when something darted in the road in front of me, fast. I screeched to a stop and looked wildly about, but saw nothing until I looked in my left mirror and saw what looked like a large, mangy dog standing about 5 feet, hard to tell with the mirror, behind the car. I stared for a while, thinking I might be seeing a grey wolf, albeit a sick and unhealthy one. Just as I reached for my phone to take a picture to send to my dad, it waved. It took its front paw off the ground and waved at me with a hand. I know what I saw. I slammed my foot on the gas like my wife was pregnant and booked it out of there, not having the nuts to look in the mirrors for at least a few more hours. 
while driving back from Texarkana one time, I had a guy cut me off, so I honked at him. It wasn't an obnoxious honk or anything, just a little beep beep to let him know what he'd done. I went around him, no finger, no dirty look, and drove for another hour or so and completely forgot about the guy. A good 70 miles later, I was hungry and stopped off at a Whataburger to get a bite. As I was getting out of my car, this car pulled up directly behind mine. The window rolls down, and it's the dude that cut me off. I quickly calibrate myself for some sort of confrontation. And that's when he did the most unexpected thing. He apologized for not looking before he got over and offered to buy my lunch. I thanked him, declined his offer, and apologized for honking at him. He told me to have a nice day, and he went on his way. I once drove from Michigan to Alabama and needed some coffee. Being unfamiliar with the current area I was in, I asked my phone to point me to the nearest Starbucks. It was about 1 a.m., and it said it was still open. I followed the directions, and it led me to an unlit, pitch-black dirt road. Eventually, my phone chimed, you've arrived at your destination. I looked to the left, looked to the right, nothing. I was sure I was going to be murdered, and I got the hell out of there pretty quick. My grandmother was in a truck with her driver, coming back at night on a winding mountain road, when her driver was like, ma'am, I can't drive anymore, I'm seeing double roads all of a sudden. We need to stop. In Chinese folklore, when you start seeing two roads when you know there should only be one, it means that there's a malicious ghost trying to trick you into falling off a cliff or crashing. So they stop and park on the side of the road to wait for this to clear up. About 10 minutes in, a wolf or a wild dog comes out of the mountains and starts circling their truck, snapping and growling at something. Then, all of a sudden, they hear it yelp in pain and see it go flying as if it got kicked really hard by something. It runs off. They waited until sunrise, which was like three hours, to start again, but it freaked them out. In the middle of winter, about 4 a.m., at least 30 inches of snow cover the ground, not the road. I was driving back from a casino towards Virginia, Minnesota, just north of Cloquet, Minnesota. My friend and I were about four car lengths behind a pickup truck and gaining, so I went to switch lanes. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed movement. I looked just in time to see some sort of bipedal running full speed across the road, in front of the truck, into the right of way, and off into a forest. The truck slammed on his brakes, as did I. My friend and I looked at each other slack jawed as we crept past the truck in complete shock, too scared to stay stopped because we both knew we saw something extraordinary. The truck driver looked like he had seen a ghost and appeared in shock as well. We noped it out of there as fast as we could, trying to process what just happened. We got a few miles down the road and simply asked each other if we just saw what we thought we just saw. Without a doubt, we both witnessed something less than four feet tall and impossibly sprinting on two legs through damn close to three feet of snow. We went back to her place outside of Virginia and locked the doors and windows. It didn't matter, as neither of us could sleep a wink that night. To this day, I wish I would have stopped and spoke with that truck driver to see if he got a better glimpse, as he was a yard away from smoking the goddamn thing. Nope, nope. I know I saw a midget Bigfoot. I live in Victoria, Australia, and there have long been legends of big cats in the area, particularly in the western region. I've lived here my whole life and never really thought too much about it. I live in one of the larger towns here and recently started dating a lady who lives on a farm about 20 minutes out of town, a pretty straightforward trip up the highway, one turn off, and along a dark, unlit, narrow country road for the last five minutes. I've done this trip a few times and nothing out of the ordinary until two weeks ago. As I was driving down the unlit road with my high beams on, I noticed movement on the road ahead and two glowing eyes. As I got closer, I saw it was a black cat. It wasn't until I got closer that I realized how big it was. It stood up and was as high as the bonnet of my car. Its tail was thick. The thing was ducking huge. It was no ordinary cat. As I got about 10 meters from it, it took off into the nearby bushes. I slowed down and redirected my car's headlights into the bushes, but I couldn't see anything, and after a few moments, I continued on to my lady's house. I told her about it, and now I hate going out to her farm, sitting on the porch, and staring out into the darkness. When I was in high school, I lived in a small rural town. There are lots of dirt roads and open fields. My friends and I used to drive around late at night, like teenagers do. One night in my freshman year, my best friend at the time called me to come get her and drive around. It was about 2 a.m., and she lived way out in the middle of these dirt roads and fields. We were coming up to a four-way stop when we noticed two green lights in the middle of the crossroads. As we got closer, we saw two old people, a man and a woman, standing completely still, holding lanterns with green lights in them. 
When I say standing completely still, they were as still as statues. They didn't even blink. When we got to the stop, they didn't move, so we just floored it right past them. It's been seven years since then, and I still get goosebumps. In February of 2021, my ex and I wanted to travel a bit. I was 19 at the time, and she was 18. My brother has some mental health issues, and I didn't want to leave him out, so we invited him along. We were driving from low country South Carolina all the way to the Grand Canyon. We did this all in one day. Me and my brother traded off driving throughout the day and night. I'd say it was about 1 to 2.30 a.m., and my brother wanted me to drive at this point. We were almost to New Mexico, just on the border of Texas and New Mexico. I had been driving for 30 minutes at this point and I wasn't the slightest bit tired out of the blue I started feeling insanely tired and could barely keep my eyes open we were driving at about 80 miles per hour at this point and I saw something in my rear view mirror running on all fours across the interstate I thought I was tripping out and looked at my rear view for 2 minutes and saw nothing I kept driving as soon as I looked away from the rear view on the passenger side of the car there was the same figure running at our speed around 80 miles per hour. I was freaking the duck out I screamed at my brother to wake up and look outside the window and when he looked there was nothing there and I suddenly wasn't tired anymore I thought I was going crazy I told my brother he needs to drive because I'm really tired we pulled off at the next exit 10 miles down the interstate at this point we had made it to New Mexico and it was nothing but oil fields and desert not even a gas station in sight as we were switching seats I saw it again out in the desert maybe 150 yards away and it was massive I yelled at my brother to drive and get the duck out of there to do this day I have no idea what it is but I assume it was a Wendigo I'm just glad we made it out. I was driving through Kansas early Monday morning, like 1 or 2 a.m. The semi truck behind me had his brights on, and I kept looking in my rearview mirror as I kept thinking what a crap he was. As I looked back once, this complete black human shaped figure passed behind my car, obscuring the truck's headlights. It was about as fast as a person running, six feet tall, and very skinny. Just like that, it was gone. I don't think it was actually a person. It was a highway in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, in the middle of the night. There had been nothing on the road before me or on the side of the road, and then suddenly it was there. Some time ago, my girlfriend and I were driving back from a date around midnight. We were close to home, and the road we were on crossed over an old railroad crossing. We approach and get ready to cross. As soon as we are near the tracks to cross, the brightest light I have ever seen starts from my left and speeds towards me. The brightness fills the cab of my vehicle, and I think we are gone. As fast as it happened, it ended. The light simply vanishes. No sounds, no trace of it, nothing. I'm still intact, driving like normal, and getting ready to stop at the next intersection. We don't speak for a moment, and I ask, stunned, if she saw that too. She just nods her head. I am not entirely sure what it was or why it happened. It just freaked me the hell out. So I was driving just before about 11 p.m. at night down a road that's kind of close to houses, so definitely not weird for someone to be walking but very weird due to the time, what they were wearing, and how they acted. As I was driving, I saw this very tall man dressed in all black with a hood, but not any kind of clothing I'd see someone wear these days. They had no face at all and just stood completely still like a statue. I had to swerve my car, and I swear they were like one centimeter from my car still. The thing was that they had time to run across the road as well. My heart was beating so fast, and immediately after, I abandoned my idea of where I was going and just went straight home. Now I'm just freaking out reading about the hooded man and the cloaked man, and I feel it may be due to the fact I had a terrible acid trip a few weeks ago. Me and my mom encountered a Wendigo last night. We were on our way from our aunt's house because she needed help mounting her new TV. So, on the way from the store, we stopped at our aunt's place, helped her, and went on about our business. Our aunt lives in this neighborhood that's out in the country, so there's nothing but miles and miles of trees with a few houses in between. Mom was the one that was driving, and we both saw this tall, lanky, white creature with the face of a deer, but we both knew it wasn't a deer. Mom started speeding fast as hell down the motorway, and what made this even scarier was that we were the only cars on the road. For a while, we didn't even say anything to one another, and she finally said, did you see that thing run across the road? I told her I did, and we drifted off into silence again. Today, she brought it up again and said it looked like a Wendigo, and I definitely agreed. Because she thinks this is the second time that she's seen this thing. It was late at night, and I was driving down the same highway I had a million times, coming back home from hanging out with friends. I was like 18 years old. It's a highway out of town, with trees on each side. I saw what I thought was a big-ass moose with antlers off in the distance, just beyond where my headlights reached. 
I slowed way down because I knew how unpredictable wildlife can be. As I got closer to move around it, I realized what I was looking at. Since my brain registered it as a moose, it seemed to morph in front of my eyes into a man. But it was indeed a man with both hands up in the air. He was standing in the middle of the road, and he looked like a Native American man. He seemed like a really tall man. But there he was, in the middle of the road, with his hands in the air, and I was like, what the duck? But then I realized he was standing over something, a porcupine. It looked like it was dead, and I'm not totally sure why, but I felt like he was doing some weird ritual. It was the middle of the night in the middle of nowhere, and he was in the middle of the road with a dead porcupine. I got the duck out of there quick. I was riding a motorcycle south of Alice Springs towards the South Australian border at about 2 a.m. during the winter. It was a clear, moonless night. Every now and again, I'd stop to warm my hands on the engine. The first time, I turned the engine off and was shocked by the darkness. You could tell the horizon by where the stars stopped. But other than that, there is no light. I might have been the last living organism on Earth. After that, I left the engine and lights on when I stopped. I was driving home from San Jose to San Francisco late at night several years ago. I was dead tired but wanted to sleep in my own bed that night. I was falling asleep and was behind an SUV with the spare tire on the back. Anyway, my eyes are getting heavy, and I'm on Highway 101 trying to stay awake when I see a figure in white hanging from the spare tire of the car in front of me. I slightly freak out and force myself awake. I look again and see nothing but the spare tire. At that point, I figured I really should just pull over and take a nap, which I did. This time I'm heading to Lakeport, which is about a couple hours north of San Francisco. There's a stretch of road going over a mountain where the road is really narrow. There are a few spots where you can park your car in case of an emergency. It was really late at night, and I'm driving by one of those spots where a car is parked. The dome light is on in this car, and I can see someone on the driver's side. I'm looking, and this youngish woman with a freakishly weird smile is just staring at me as I drive past. It still gives me goosebumps. The weirder thing is that a couple of days later, I'm on the same road heading back from Lakeport, and I see the same car still parked there. It makes me wonder who that person was. I was driving home through Kentucky. It was the middle of the night, and we were going to run out of gas. I pulled off a remote exit for gas, but the station was closed. There was a police car idling on the side of the lot, so I went over to ask if he knew where the closest open station was. But the officer didn't move. It was like he was sleeping, but in a horrible position. I tried knocking on the window again, but nothing happened. I noticed the fog was starting to roll in like a bad horror movie, so I got back in my car and headed back for the interstate. There was a mileage sign coming up, and as I got closer, I saw a girl standing by the sign. I turned to look behind me as I drove past, but she was gone. She couldn't have been older than 10 in pigtail braids and a nightgown. I finally found an open station at the next exit, but all anyone did was stare at me. Not a single word. Needless to say, I got the duck out of there. Driving down a small highway in Missouri, it's a warm night in July. I've got my window down, and I'm just smoking a cigarette, minding my own business, when I see three lights up ahead. They're on the opposite side of the road, and the way they're aligned, they look like they belong to a motorcycle. I don't think anything of this until I get closer, close enough that I should be able to see the bike or anyone around it. Nothing. Just three lights, shining out into the night, apparently attached to nothing. As I start to pass the lights on my left, I see in my peripheral vision what looks like a person, but this person is completely white. An opaque white figure stands behind the lights, and I can feel that it's looking at me. As I finally pass by, I look in my mirror to find out what the figure was. But instead, I see nothing but an empty field, no lights, no figure, no bike, nothing behind me for miles. The hair stands up on the back of my neck, and I book it out of the area. I have never seen anything like it since, despite traveling on that road quite frequently. Driving in the backwoods in northern GA, heading home moon is out, but this country road had no street lights, so basically my headlights are it. I can see silhouettes of things on the side of the road ahead of me. This massive shape comes out from behind a tree and begins squirming along the side of the road up ahead. I slow down and ponder if I want to go forward anymore because, while I have no idea what it is, I do know it's large. It looks about as tall as my car and just as long, and I thought I saw spikes on its back. And it's moving weirdly. I decide to screw it and begin slowly going forward. I'm in a car, it can handle anything the state of Georgia can throw at it. Get closer to the thing and notice it's undulatingly funny. Turn ever so slightly to hit it with my headlights. It was a deer trying to hump another deer, and I guess it was not quite getting in there. 
I didn't stop laughing until I got home because I was sure for a moment I was going to be attacked by some ancient, unspeakable demon. This story didn't happen to me, but to my grandfather sometime in the mid-50s in a small country in southern Europe. It was late one night, my grandpa was riding his bike home after visiting my grandmother, this was before they were married. They both lived in small villages, except she lived in another village that was at least half an hour away from where he lived. Also, this being the 1950s in a small rural village, there were no streetlights, the only light was from the moon and the stars, and if any of you are familiar with how the sky looks in rural farm areas, you know how beautiful it is and you can see hundreds of them. So there my grandpa was, all alone, pedaling down a dark, desolate dirt road, when suddenly he saw three women ahead of him, each of them carrying a lantern. In those days, you never saw a woman outside after dark alone, unless she was accompanied by a brother, father, or husband. It was different times. So although it was unusual, he didn't think much of it. He decided at this point to get off his bike and walk instead, but at the very moment he approached them, they quickly formed a triangle shape, surrounding him, while one of the women blocked his way on the narrow road. Whenever he would try to get past her, she would block his way. I don't know if this scared him or if he wasn't scared at all, but the only thing he said was, duck, get out of my way. The three women let out a simultaneous cackle, not a normal loud laugh but a cackle, according to my grandpa, the weirdest sound he had ever heard in his entire life. It was obvious these women were not going to budge, so he basically had to push his way through. He continued on his way and finally made it home, but he didn't get any sleep that night because he had a train to catch to get back to the city where he was working at the time. I can assure you that it is 100% true. He thinks they may have been what we call bruxes, which means witches, women who practice witchcraft, and all those things related to that. It makes sense, but who knows, it was just so ducking weird and creepy. Even though they didn't do anything to him, I would have been scared shless if this happened to me. So I was returning from a night out with my girlfriend. She lived about 45 kilometers, 27 miles, from me. It was about 2 or 3 in the morning. The road was going through some small villages, so there are not a lot of people there. As I was coming down from the hill, there was a mild turning of the road to the left, and on the right side, there was a small field. The road was higher than a field, so you couldn't see all the way down. So as I was driving, I noticed some shape on the right side, and it was coming to the road. As I was coming closer, a girl ran up to the road and jumped almost in front of my car while waving with her hands. I've managed to evade her and continue to drive, as I was in the middle of the night and had no idea who she was. I was thinking about stopping, but then you remember all the stories where people would get robbed or even worse. The next day, I was thinking about that and felt bad for not stopping, as she could be in danger. So I checked all the media to see if there was anything reported. There was nothing. That was about 7 years ago, and I still think about it. So I went through a really rough patch around 17 to 18, and to help me keep my mind off everything, mom would take us to my aunt's place, which is 30 minutes away. This one night in particular, we ended up driving back home at around 1am, and we were talking. We were coming up to a corner not far from home, and mom literally screamed and slammed on the brakes. She then started frantically telling me she nearly hit that woman on the road with a kid, and she's almost in tears. I look around, I look everywhere, but there is no one there. I say, mom, there's no one there. She basically screams back, there was a woman, right there. She's pointing to the middle of the road. She's in tears. We're still stopped in the middle of the road. Finally, she starts driving again. I decided to ask, what did she look like? She said, I'd, she had dark hair, she was wearing white, and she was holding a child. To this day, I still have no idea what the hell she saw, we haven't really spoken about it since. So this happened late last night. I'm from Texas, and I drove out to the beachside last night to enjoy the wind from Hurricane Delta. Before I was about to drive back home, I noticed these two neighborhoods were separated by a main road that was the polar opposite of each other. One was very poor, and one was very rich. Now, I have a weird obsession with architecture and houses and often drive through interesting looking neighborhoods to check out the houses in my free time, so I thought I'd check these two neighborhoods out. Somehow, as soon as I started driving through them, I'd lose my memory and sense of direction and just start circling around with no aim. I wasn't drunk or under the influence of any drug, so I had no idea why this was happening. And every time I'd get lost, I just kept coming back around to this huge church or cathedral. This happened about three or four times with one of the neighborhoods, so I thought maybe it's just a weird thing my brain is doing where it's remembering what street I drove through last time, and because I'm lost, it's automatically making me drive through the same street and making me come back to the same spot, 
So if I change the neighborhood, it'll stop doing it. So I went over to the other neighborhood and started driving through, and lo and behold, I lost my sense of direction and started circling around until I ended up at that same church again, and again, and again. I think I counted a total of six times before it happened before I got freaked out and frustrated and just went back home. Oh, and to make matters even freakier, the winds messed up the lights around the church, and they were flickering like those out of horror movies. It was probably the weirdest thing I've ever experienced in my life. So this happened about five years ago. It was around 12 a.m., and my partner and I were driving home from fishing. The road we were driving down is pretty notorious for car accidents. It's a long, dark road that has many memorials along it from where people have passed due to car accidents. Also, around the middle of this road, off to the side, there is a cemetery. We had just gotten onto the road, maybe 200 meters from where the street lights stopped, and I was looking out the window. On the side of the road, I saw two little girls playing. It was as if they were building a fort out of boxes, they were both wearing dresses that cut off to about the middle of their shins, and both had long brown braided pigtails. One was shorter than the other, so I assumed they were sisters. As we drove past them, I quickly yelled out to my partner to stop and turn around because it was ducking 12 a.m. at night and there were literal children playing on the side of such a dangerous road. We had to drive back up to the lights because the road is only one lane on each side and doesn't have any side streets. We finally drove back around and stopped where I saw the little girls, there was no one there. I looked around for trees or mailboxes or anything because I thought maybe there was something there that made the shapes of what I saw, but there was nothing, it was just a clear opening without anything on it, so we started driving down, and maybe like 20 to 30 meters from where I saw the girls, there was a cross as a memorial. Every time I drive down that road now, I look at the spot where I saw the girls, but I've never seen them again after that night. I was driving with a friend out in the high desert, in California, near Victor Valley. I have driven this road many times. It is mostly covered with shrubs and small desert trees, but in some places it is kind of wooded with large rocky areas. It was in one of these weird patches that we saw whatever it was. It was dusk, and we were sober. The driver and I both caught a three-second glimpse of it between a few trees and a boulder. It looked like some sort of weird, long humanoid with shiny skin and backward knees. They bent the wrong way entirely. It was fast, we saw it again in another gap, and it seemed to be keeping up with the car. We got the hell off the road at the next bend near the place we were staying, locked the door, and talked about it for about 10 minutes before deciding we weren't crazy and also moving. I live in a small town in Florida, very close to the coast. It's a commuter town, and it's usually pretty quiet at night. But since the state shut down, people haven't been so eager to get home and go to bed so they can get to work in the morning. But I work in service and still work just as much as I did, if not more, before this all happened. So one night, my dad picked me up from a closing shift. We decided to take the back road because it's faster. It's still fairly inhabited, with houses, a church, and a high school on the way, but it's poorly lit. It was an uneventful ride, we were just talking as usual, catching up on how our day was. Until we made the final turn onto a stretch of road beside the church, and in the middle of the road was a creature. Physically, it was large and covered in thick dark fur, for reference on the size, my dad drives a 2005 Dodge Ram, and the headlights just reached its shoulders. It had six skinny legs, and it was hunched over, dragging one of them behind. And they curved outward, which made me wonder if they were supposed to or if they were severely bowed. I can't logically think of any animal it could have been, unless it was mutated or had been born deformed. But the sounds it made were unlike anything I've ever heard. When our headlights hit it, it sank to the ground, screamed, and ran into the woods. The screams were high-pitched and wet, like they were gargling. I saw it stumble off the road and hit a tree before screaming again and disappearing. My dad stopped the truck, and we got out with a flashlight. We only stayed for a few minutes, as we were both pretty shaken. We looked for blood or tracks, but there weren't any. But what I do remember is that the whole section of road in front of our truck was covered in white sand, and even though we're close to a beach, it's all woods around that area. We got back in the truck and went home. My dad refuses to talk about it. And we don't take the back road anymore. When I was 18, 2005, my mom was giving me a ride to work. My car had been impounded for something stupid, and I had to wait 30 days to get it back. In the meantime, my mom was giving me rides to work. On Saturdays, I worked the morning shift, so I had to be at work by 5 a.m. That means we had to leave the house no later than 4.30. It was still dark outside, like pitch black, and very cold. That morning, as my mom drove me to work, from a distance, I could see a figure getting ready to cross the road, basically, jaywalk in front of us. 
As we got closer, I could see it was a young girl. I thought to myself, damn, I caught her doing the walk of shame. She had no shoes and a long white shirt, like if she were wearing a man's white shirt. It was big on her, it looked like she had no pants on, but you could barely see she had these short jean shorts under her large shirt, like the kind that used to be pants, but she cut herself to make shorts. She wasn't wearing shoes. My mom started talking SHT in Spanish, like, what kind of girl walks around the streets at this hour dressed like that? She was walking now in the middle of the street was super slow, to the point where my mom had to stop like 10 feet away from her because she was still in the street and blocking us. When my mom stopped, the girl came to a complete stop but wasn't facing us, it was facing in the direction it was crossing, from my right to my left. As we were close, I could see her skin was a real bluish gray, and her hair was black. It looked wet and tangled, like she had just gotten out of the shower. My mom was about to honk at her when she slowly turned her head to look right at us. Her hair was covering her face. She looked like the girl from the ring. The part that I'll never forget was that she moved her hair out of the way and had no face. Like nothing, it was just all smooth. Like a slender man with no eyes, no mouth, and no nose. It just looked smooth. My mom started to have a panic attack. I literally felt my heart drop. I was now focused on calming my mom down. The girl looked at us for like 2 to 3 seconds, then took off running. It didn't move at irregular speeds, but now it was active. I never saw anything like that in my life. To this day, my mom and I can't explain what that was. I'm from Rhode Island, and I was able to explore most of the creepy places. Anywho, a couple of Halloweens ago, my friend Ashley and I wanted to check out this place called Tower Hill Road. Her sister-in-law, who was also into this type of SHT, told us about this place and how it's haunted and stuff, so we all decided to check it out. I'm in my car with Ash, and her sister-in-law is with her buddies in another car. Keep in mind that I'm following my sister-in-law. I had my radio on blast just so I wasn't so spooked out, and I was just about to enter Tower Hill when my radio just shut off completely. Right when I was about to enter. The radio was that kind that you had to push the volume button to turn it on and off. Me and Ash just looked at each other and were like, uh, should we go home? Lamau. We called the Sisai Law, and she just told us to stop being little witches and to just go. Let me tell you, that road is creepy as duck. It was very narrow, to the point that you wouldn't know how to make room for other incoming cars, and very curvy. There were houses and people living in them, but there was one section that was just pitch black and abandoned, with vined up houses. The story was that there is a little ghost boy that rides his bike and also a ghost dog that would chase after your car. None of that happened, lol, but the experience was pretty wild. What's very weird is that, for some reason, I would want to go back there and try to scare my friends but would never find it. Literally for an hour on the main road looking for the entrance. Even the GPS would act funny. But in other times, I would find it with ease. This was around 2015, it was around 11 at night. I was driving from my dad's place to my mom's. Anyway, I was driving. I had just started down the long driveway when I felt like I was being watched. It's not cool, but it happens more often than you would believe. I'm nearing the highway when I see a dark shape at the edge of the woods. Oh well, probably a deer. I shake it off. We have tons of wildlife in the area, from deer to panthers to the occasional bear, and then it starts chasing me. Keep in mind, please, that this shit is practically normal in my mind. I have tons of weird stuff that happens, and it's not like it was just barreling at me. It just moved after my car, staying at the edge of the woods. So, I keep my pace. I turn onto the highway and speed up to 50 or so. I keep noticing something in my peripheral, though, so I slow down and start looking for what it could be. A few yards behind me, I see this huge dog. I grew up with larger dogs, my aunt had a St. Bernard mix growing up, and I've had various large dogs. This thing was literally the size of my car. I know I mentioned bears before, but bears don't chase cars, and we only have black bears, which are like the most docile kind. Okay. Now I'm freaking out. I gun it, releasing a long stream of curses and telling my car to get over it. It was a poorly kept 95 Honda Accord, I had tons of trouble with it dying on me, so any time I had to push it, I made sure to speak kindly to it. I didn't care at this point, I was simply trying not to die. I seemingly can't shake it for too long. So, in an act of bravery, read stupidity, I pull over in a church parking lot, thinking maybe it's some sort of hell beast and it won't come into the light or onto church land. Holy SHT, was I wrong? I stop and get my phone out to call my boyfriend. In that span of time, it catches up and jumps onto my car. I can see, feel, and hear the metal popping and creaking, and I see drool splatter onto my windshield. 
I scream, dropping my phone. It jumps off of my car onto the hood, where I get a glimpse of it before it goes into the cemetery and disappears. Gated cemetery. It jumps the fence. It was definitely a dog. Built like a Rottweiler pit mix, but darker and larger. It was solid black, with paws the size of dinner plates. It had a huge head, almost the size of my car windows. I don't know why it decided to leave me alone, but it did, and I am so thankful. I called my boyfriend, crying. He calmed me down, listened, and told me that when I got home, I should take pictures. And I did, or at least tried. By the time I got home, the only thing left was a single dent in the roof of my car and some faint claw marks that were more like indentations in the metal. One time when I was in Pennsylvania, I was around 6 or 7 and riding with my grandma to McDonald's at like 8 or a bit later at night, and as we're driving to McDonald's, the road is empty except for us. So the road we're on is kind of a forest right next to it. When I was little, I didn't like looking at the forest at night because it gave me this sort of anxiety. So for some reason, this time I was looking at the trees on the side of the car, and I saw a man. So this was kind of weird because this road was kind of in the middle of nowhere. So I keep looking at him, and he passes a tree, and I swear to God that the thing that came out on the other side of that tree was like a big dog. I saw the guy come out the other side with a dog. I wasn't dreaming because I remember asking my grandma if she saw that too, and she said no. Scary and weird as duck. I was at my uncle's farm, where I've been many times before, and followed a dirt trail into the cornfields on a four-wheeler. It was 10 or so at night, so it was dark. I went for a while until the dirt trail ended, so I went off the end and turned around to head back. But when I made the full circle, the path just wasn't there. I stopped and looked around, but I could not see it, even with the headlights on full power. I even got off and searched on foot, using my phone flashlight, but it was like the path had actually vanished. I had no cell service either. Eventually someone came looking for me, and I was able to see their flashlight and follow the light back. I thought I was gone for maybe an hour, it turns out it was three. Super confusing and disorienting. The weirdest part was that the next morning I went back to see if I could see my path and where I got lost. I followed the trail to the end, and I found where I went off the trail to turn around, the corn was all bent over, and it led me straight back to the path. It was as if I had traveled right back to where the path was, but for some reason I didn't see it. Super weird. This happened to me and my brother a few years ago, in 2009. We were driving home from a family visit in Illinois, back to Oklahoma City. We left Illinois around late noon and arrived in Oklahoma long after dark. I don't really remember the time, but it was well after midnight. Probably around 1 or 2 a.m. we were driving on I-44, somewhere between the OK State Line and Tulsa. If you don't know the area, there is not much going on there except some small villages or the occasional truck stop. As I said, we were driving on I-40 with almost no traffic around us. My brother and I were talking about whatever, I don't really remember, probably just some brotherly bullshit, when we both suddenly realized, we aren't on I-40 anymore. For some reason, we are driving on the service road south of I-40, the interstate is actually to our right. We both WTF'd and had no idea how we ended up there, nor did we know how long we had driven on that service road. We continued a few miles to the next on-ramp, where we changed back onto the interstate again. We sometimes jokingly talk about that story, how the aliens captured and probed us until today. I would love to know how we ended up on that road, though. Driving several hundred miles at night apparently screws with your head. I was visiting a friend for his birthday this very weekend. He lives on the edge of the Mojave in the high desert of California. His home is on a large plot off a main highway that heads either to the Mojave slash Mojave line or into Death Valley. One of his favorite ways to pass time is to hit golf balls into the desert for fun. He has 25 golf balls, all marked with the first letter of his first name. He and friends would smack the balls into the abyss of the desert during get-togethers and such. The first time he did this, it was dusk, and he told everyone they would collect the balls in the morning. To his and everyone else's amazement, 25 golf balls were neatly stacked and gathered in a pile under a small shrub about 90 to 110 yards from the location where they were hitting them. Next to the golf balls were crystal rock formations. At first, my friend thought it was a coincidence that this had happened. Then the second time it happened, he thought someone was messing with him, a friend, or something was playing a trick. But he has been able to recreate this every single time. He told me the story while visiting, and I didn't believe him until we hit the 25 balls marked with the first letter of his first name into the desert. The next morning, they were there next to the shrub and crystal rock formations. I took a crystal home with me, and he has been keeping and leaving different crystals there as a thank you to whatever is doing this. 
Just before I arrived, he was looking for golf balls because he knew he had hit one particularly hard one evening and believed it had actually crossed the highway. He did find a golf ball, however, it didn't have the first letter of his first name on it. It was labeled Alien because that was the brand. This blew my mind. I, being very skeptical of these things, know for certain that there is no way a person is out in this desert doing this. There are no people around for miles and miles. This happened in 2016 in the middle of the summer. I was 16 years old and was driving home from hanging out with a couple of my friends. It was around 3 to 4 AM, so it was pitch black outside. I don't even remember the moon being very bright. I was about 3 miles from home and driving pretty fast, 60 to 70 miles per hour, because I had to get home before my mom woke up. I came over the top of a really tall hill and was going down it when, on the right side of the road, this thing stepped out. It was really tall and a weird orange slash tan color, and I only saw it for a couple seconds because, like I said, I was driving fast. I distinctly remember feeling like it looked right at me, even though I didn't see any facial features. And immediately after I went by it, I got extremely upset, like ugly crying and scared, but I couldn't really say why. It's not like this thing did anything other than stand there. Even thinking about it now makes something in me a little upset. I wasn't drinking that night or on any drugs. And I feel like this is important, but this happened in rural central Iowa, and that's why I'm not going to say Bigfoot or anything because you don't really hear about people seeing that type of thing in Iowa. We were staying at a place in a small coastal town for the summer vacation, during December in our part of the world, which was about 20 minutes on a deserted highway away from the other town where our party was. This is one of the most beautiful parts of the world I have ever been in. On one side is a desert for kilometers upon kilometers and nothing of note, and directly on the other side is the ocean. So me and my two friends go there about 1700 hours and have a good time, however, at about midnight, I'm extremely tired and want to head home, I was the only one with a license and a car at the time, so I was always the driver. One friend wants to join me, and the other one wants to stay over, but we have to head out early the next day. So we agree that the two of us that want to leave go home and sleep, and then we'll pick up the party animal at about 6 o'clock. At about 4 o'clock, I'm called awake by her, she's tired and wants to get a bit of a nap before we head out. A little bit annoyed, I get out of bed and wake my friend up that went home with me to let her know I'm heading out so she doesn't freak out if I'm not there if she wakes during the night. She says she wants to come with. Good, we head out. That highway is pitch black and deserted, quite foggy, but with fine visibility with the headlights and a bright setting. We get there, pick up a party animal friend, and get called losers for flaking out. Whatever, I need more sleep, so I say goodbye quickly, and we're back on the road. A party animal friend falls asleep on the back seat, but another friend tries to stay awake with me, so I'm not the only one awake. Okay, so here it gets to the part I don't understand. About halfway in, the fog is a bit thicker, but there is this feeling of impending doom. Me and my awake friend don't talk. We have the radio on very softly to music. However, I can see she is distraught, and I am too. I can't see anything, so I think we must both be imagining danger. However, as we get over a little hill, my high beams shine in the distance, and I see a figure on the left side of the road, we drive left, so on the side where my car is. It looks like a person but is gigantic. Like 2.5 meters, 8 feet. I get the feeling it's a woman, but it's still a bit away. I'm already driving slowly, about 60 kilometers per hour, because of the fog. I first think I'm imagining, but as we get closer, I can see her, like I can see my friend next to me, very real. She is extremely tall, white, and in a long dress, so white and pure, with blue woven in. Very beautiful. We get closer, and I slow down as she is walking slowly in front of my car, about 200 meters away. This is where I notice her face. It's absolutely pitch black. The surroundings of the night were black, but her face was like a hole in reality. Her arms, where they were supposed to come out of the sleeves, were also so black that they were void. I started crying a bit out of fear like this paralyzing fear. I just thought to myself that I must keep my cool at all times because my friend's lives are in my hands. If I freak out and lose control, we'll end up hurt and broken down next to this thing. That wasn't an option. She slash it came to a halt, and I ended up driving by so close to her that her stomach was mere cms away from my friend's passenger window on the left side. This was terrifying. During this, none of us spoke. After we passed that and I calmed down, my awake friend asked me if I felt that absolute nastiness back there. I calmed down and asked her if she didn't see it too, because it was right by her ducking window, but she didn't see anything. She, however, just felt very distraught. 
there's a long stretch of road in Jefferson County, Kansas, which connects two of the state highways in the county, acting as an artery for those coming and going from interior towns and servicing Perry State Park as well. It's called Ferguson Road, and it twists and turns and winds its way through densely wooded hills and sudden, lonely fields. There's a stretch about two miles long, a straightaway capped at each end by dramatically steep hills, and I had just come down the northern end. My brights were on, and the last light coming through the trees showed me movement beyond the range of my headlights. I slowed, since deer impacts are incredibly common here, and soon a tall, dark figure, a humanoid, began crossing Ferguson. It was unhurried, despite my speed, I was still going at least 40 miles an hour, and crept across as though on a stroll. I can't recall a stride, it was more of a shuffle, with the arms to the sides of the body. I was, to put it inelegantly, creeped. The substance of it seemed smooth, and there was an oily sheen to it, maybe even some iridescence, I can't remember if my brain made that part up, I need a dash cam. At this point, I was maybe 50 feet away and started braking. It seemed to notice the shift in the behavior of my vehicle, sped up slightly, and hid behind a state park sign. It was here that it got more interesting. Two things, first, it was almost comical how it was hiding. If a pedestrian on Ferguson doesn't want to be seen at night, they duck into the trees, I've seen this. The county is full of right-wing extremists who walk the woods with ridiculous firepower, and it's not a cool thing to find. This is a metal sign, maybe seven feet off of the ground on the side of the road, held up by two long, wooden posts. It hit as though I couldn't see it beyond the space between the posts, when only its head was behind the sign. A copse of dense conifers is literally three feet away, I get the sense that an animal would have ducked in there. And that brings me to two, it was clearly tall enough to obscure its head behind the sign, which again is about seven feet up. I sped past. Maybe about 100 yards ahead, it all clicked, and I slammed on my brakes. I waited for a moment, nearly on the bridge across the reservoir, collecting myself, and opted to keep driving. I still see it so vividly in my head when I take that plunge across that stretch at night. The shuffling, stiff gait, the odd hiding, the black sheen to it I cannot imagine what it could be, but it's another little thing here in the country that's keeping me on my toes. Tonight a few friends wanted to go to a commercial haunted house, but instead I convinced them to take a trip with me to Ghost Road, Bragg Road, in the big thicket. I can't imagine a better night for this, a full moon and low temperatures. I had been once before when I was in high school with some friends but left empty-handed. This time, however, the trip was absolutely phenomenal, and we got to experience what all the hype was about. So, myself and four others got a hold of a conversion van for the night. Bragg Road is about 100 miles from where we live, so we made a night of it. We got all stocked up with cameras and food, hooked up an N64 to the TV in the back of the van, and were having a hell of a time before we even got to the road. When we got there, we stopped right outside the road. We read a paper explaining some of the things that are reported to happen on this road. The time was about 11.49. I should also add that we were completely alone on this drive. We did not see or hear any other cars the entire time we were in Saratoga. We finished our smoke and made our way down to the first stopping point. We stopped and read a historical marker and walked around a bit with flashlights. Nothing unusual. We continued on to the second stop point with another historical marker. This time, however, we saw a faint yellow light in the distance. It seemed to sway back and forth, subtly change colors, and vary in brightness. Definitely not characteristic of what you would expect headlights to look like, the most common debunker of the myth. It appeared for 40 to 50 seconds and dissipated into the woods. We continued on. It was about 1228 when this happened. We drove on for a while and came to a third historical marker. We decided to set up a hookah there and smoke while sitting in some lawn chairs we brought. We got to the point of bringing the chairs out when we saw it again. It was very faint at first, a yellow-amber color flickering in and out of sight. This time, however, the light became gradually brighter. After looking at it for 15 seconds or so, it was clear that the light was coming towards us. All of a sudden, it changed from an amber yellow to a bright white. Everybody started freaking the duck out and trying to leave. I stood on the road with my other ballsy friend and waited to see what would happen. At this point, the light was still coming towards us at about the speed of a person jogging. My friend's girlfriend was crying at this point, so we had to get in the van and head forward. We happened to be going in the same direction as the light, but it shortly vanished once we were driving. Also of possible significance, the temperature felt a very dramatic 15 degrees or so cooler than it did at our last stop. I am not sure if that is significant or not, but I thought it would be worth mentioning. This all happened at 1240 or so. We finished the road, 
went back in the other direction, and didn't see anything this time. We called it a night around 2.30 am after this trip, I really do believe that there is something unexplained going on. They call it swamp gas, possibly a reflection of distant headlights, although the characteristics of the movement of the light do not at all mimic what headlights look like. The more popular explanation is that a decapitated railroad worker is searching for his head. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it was exciting as hell, and I plan on going back with more equipment closer to Halloween. I used to live in Eugene, Oregon, and about six years ago, my friend and I saw something unexplainable. We were driving down a country road to a friend's house when I saw something in the middle of the road. It at first appeared to be a large dog, and having grown up with mastiffs, I became worried about the animal. As we got closer, I began to feel a chill down my spine and an uneasiness. It was dusk, but I did not have my car lights, but I could see the animal clearly still. It was the height of a deer, with a curved spine and long legs. When it moved, it appeared as if the animal's bones were broken and the movements were unnatural, but the animal made no cry of pain or appeared to be hurt. The animal had black fur that looked like the worst mange I had ever seen. The naked patches of skin looked wrong, and the bones pushed out from under it. The animal finally turned to look at my car. It had a long nose and was drooling from its open mouth, where there appeared to be large canines. We didn't speak because, as it turned to look at us, its eyes were glowing red. I know that sounds like bullshit from a fake ghost story, but they were. My headlights were not on to illuminate the animal's eyes like that. It crossed slowly in front of my car, and as it disappeared over the side, my passenger yelled to pull up and see what the hell that was. As I pulled up, the animal was gone, and there was only a small drainage pipe and an open field beyond that. We got to our friend's house, and after some prying to him and his parents, we saw what we had seen. His father simply chucked and said, Oh, we see those out here sometimes, and continued to eat dinner. This happened in November of 2009. My then fiancé and I were driving across the U.S. from Washington State to New York State on the 90. It was late at night, and we were driving through South Dakota. I remember how it felt like we were in a different world with how absolutely dark it was. No lights from towns for miles and miles. It was pitch black and so quiet. We might as well be on the dark side of the moon. We were going over 75, and in the distance on the side of the motorway, I thought I saw an animal. As we got closer, the shape became more apparent, and it was a man walking along the edge of the pavement. The image of the guy is still burned in my memory, he was real thin with super dusty or dirty clothes. It's something you see for a second, but your brain seems to compute everything. He didn't turn to look as we approached and passed. He just had his head down, like he was watching his feet as he moved along. I told my fiancé to stop because I thought that person may need help, and he thought I was crazy. In hindsight, this was a stupid thing to do, even though we were armed. Don't do this. My fiancé pulled over a bit of a distance away, and I rolled down my window a quarter of the way and yelled out, asking if he needed help. We sat for a minute, but the guy didn't approach. My fiancé humored me, and we slowly reversed to where we thought we had passed the guy. Yay, being the only car on the road, the man was gone, he either ran into the plains or maybe there was a road or path he turned on. It was so eerie because it was a pitch black moonless night, and he didn't seem to have a light source. We looked for mile markers to see if we could maybe notify the police, but we couldn't find any. We had major head scratches. When we finally got to a motel, we asked the clerk if people normally walk along the motorway, and he shrugged his shoulders. At that point, we were exhausted and fell asleep. The other day I was driving home from an indoor soccer game around 11 p.m., so it was very dark out. I was on the highway using cruise control, going about 75 miles per hour in the second lane, the first lane being the right lane, the fourth lane being the left lane. There were no other cars on the road because it was late, but eventually I started approaching a tracker trailer. As I got closer, I decided to shift over to the third lane just to give the truck some extra room. I passed the truck, continued in the third lane for a bit, and then looked to change back to the second lane. When I looked into my right side view mirror, I noticed there were car headlights approaching from behind me in the first lane. Initially, I was surprised because I hadn't noticed any cars when I passed the big truck, but I figured I must have just missed it. The car caught up to me after a few seconds, passed me by about 10 feet, then drifted back so that it was level with me going the same speed. At this point, I looked to my right at the car. It was round and silver, it could have been a hatchback, but for some reason I could not determine a make or model. There was a young man driving with a smaller person, who could have been male or female, in the passenger seat. I looked back at the road in front of me, and almost instantly, the car started drifting back behind me. I was relieved, and eventually it dropped into my blind spot. 
Another few seconds went by. I looked in my mirrors to see where the car was, and it was gone. My exit was coming up, so I had to start getting over it. I was checking my mirrors and literally turning around while driving to see where the car was, but it was nowhere. The tractor trailer's headlights were still off in the distance, about 200 yards. I figured the car must have shut their lights off and were playing a prank on me or something, but even as I shifted over to the second, then first lane, there wasn't even an obstruction to the tractor trailer lights. The car vanished. Around March of this year, my mother and father went on a trip from California to Mexico. When it was time to come back, my father was driving on the highway that he's been using ever since the 80s. The highway was Highway 99, BTW. This time, however, as he made his way back home, a bit after passing by San Diego, the green highway signs read city names that he had never seen before. You know those green signs that say the name of a city or cities and the miles to get there? For example, Los Angeles 57 those kinds of signs not only that, but the language wasn't even in English or Spanish. The names read something along the lines of Cleubixi, according to him. Also, as he was driving, he noticed that the car was going down a very steep road. My mother was asleep, so he tried to wake her up, trying to tell her that he had no idea where he was, but she was in such deep sleep that my father couldn't even manage to wake her up. My mother is a very sensitive sleeper, to the point where if I make one small step in her room while she's asleep, she immediately wakes up. As my father was trying to figure out where the hell he was, he noticed that there were no signs of any other cars around him. The time was around 3 a.m., which, to my knowledge, is referred to as the devil's hour. It took him a while, but he finally managed to find his way back to the normal roads, where he was able to recognize places such as Bakersfield, and arrived home at around 5 a.m. As I said before, my father has been driving around these areas since the 1980s and has never had such an experience. There's also no way he could have been dreaming or hallucinating as he was driving the vehicle. Otherwise, he probably would have gotten into a very fatal car accident. Could this have been a highway to hell? Or another sort of dimension? My boyfriend and I were just driving home from a friend's house. We were on a road I'm extremely familiar with, coming up to a T where there was a stop sign, and we had to turn left or right on the main road. Behind the main road is a very steep and tall bank. As we were approaching this T from a distance and the headlights started to fall on the main road, we saw a pair of eyes glowing in front of the bank. They were about three feet off the ground and seemed to be looking in our direction the entire time, despite moving sideways. Whatever the eyes belonged to, they moved quickly from right, near the stop sign, to near the left side of the road we were on. Again, the eyes never seemed to change their angle. And they didn't bob like they would with something running, they hovered. We couldn't make out anything about the body. As we actually slowed to a stop, they disappeared, and we could see the bank clearly in the high beams. Nothing was rustling, and we didn't see anything but green brush or weeds. We were really weirded out by this and couldn't figure out what it could have been. My boyfriend doesn't typically entertain the paranormal, but he really couldn't come up with an animal that matched what we saw. What could this be? I drive a public bus to work. I work in a graveyard, and on my route, I drive past multiple cemeteries in a span of 5 to 6 blocks. It was about 12.30 to 1 a.m., and I had a few passengers, but they were homeless and were sleeping, that is normal, but I get to the first cemetery, and I am driving at 35 miles per hour, and then I see a shadow from the left side of the street running towards the island to cross to where I was driving. On this street, there are no lights, only my headlights from my bus and some lights from one of the cemetery buildings. There is a bus at a stop not too far up, so I assumed it was someone trying to get on the bus, so I slowed down to stop and wait for the shadow to cross, and it was just there on the island standing, so I assumed a car from behind was coming, and I looked in my mirrors and no one was there, and then I looked up and the shadow was gone. I thought maybe I was just tired. But I've been working in the graveyard for 3 years and I'm used to being up. So I continue driving, I have about 1.5 hours left until my last stop. On the whole drive, the rear door kept sending someone standing there. So there's an automated message that says, please steer clear of the rear door, and it did this the whole ride. There was no one at the rear door, everyone was sitting down. And when a passenger exited the rear door, it wouldn't close and was acting crazy. Which never happens. And it happened after I saw the shadow. Anyway, the door at the time closed but then opened back up. I had to turn the bus completely off and on and continue my route. Even after that, it kept making the automatic message saying to steer clear of the rear door while the bus was moving. And while on my break, I turned the bus on to get heat, and it was dark. The bus was not moving, but the message kept playing over and over. It scared the SHT out of me. I just turned the bus off and got out of it. 